Sweet. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Conference Connections, the Nebraska Profile and how to use it. And joining me today are John Turner, who will be the man behind the curtain helping to uh, organize your questions. Should you have any, please put them in the question box. Uh, also joining us today and uh, presenting is Tim Gakatru. Uh, he's the Director of Research at Western Economic Services. I'm Royce Scheibel. I'm the Data and Research Analyst at NIFA. Uh, Tim and I typically will host this session at our annual conference every year. We go over the Nebraska profile, uh, kind of go through what the uh, economics of the state are, and uh, kind of just see how to use the, the profile. However, Obviously, things have been delayed due to uh, due to COVID. So uh, we are going to present here today, and then hopefully next year we can do it in person again for our conference, March 17th, uh, March 15th through 17th. Uh, before we get started, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors and exhibitors that would normally be being uh, shown off at our conference. Those are Wells Fargo, Hannah Keelan Associates, Twain Financial Services and smoke-free Nebraska. All right, Tim, if you would uh, like to take over. Sure. So we can have your screen and I will let you begin. All right. Uh, everyone, uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along because Tim is our only speaker here. Uh, we're just kind of gonna kind of uh, muddle through what, with what we have and I think we'll, uh, we'll get through it in a pretty timely manner, yeah. so. All right, so can everyone see my screen first off? <laughs> I can see it nice and bright. Yes. All right, great. That's, I, I, I did a presentation and you know, five minutes in, no one could see what I was talking about. Thank you. First off, my name is uh, Tim Gakachu. Thank you, Royce and the NIFA team, John and Joe, for having me uh, present today. I definitely miss my time coming to Nebraska at the conference and seeing everybody face to face. Um, if you haven't um, used the profile, this will be a, uh, I'm going to try to go uh, very slow um, and give you a, a detailed, in-depth uh, view about how to use it. Um, if you have used it before, um, I will make sure to highlight the new features. There are several new features. Um, in fact, there's a whole new version that we just kind of launched last night in, you know, in anticipation for this event. Um, so if you haven't if your version, if you want to play along at home, you can either go to anystats.org, nestats.org, and that'll get you there. It should be a version that looks like this. If it does not, uh, hit Control-5 on this pane, and that version will uh, update to hopefully the newest one. Control-5, reboot your, reboot your hardware and all your cache. So anystats.org, or you know you can go straight to westernes.com, Nebraska. I'm just going to do this one because it's an iframe. <clears throat> okay, so this is the normal part of the presentation where I ask how many people have used the profile um, and then people raise their hands. But of course, we're in a very weird future right now, so we can't do that. So I'm assuming 20% um, of you have and the rest haven't. So I'll just, like I said, go from start from the very beginning. Uh, the very beginning starts about 13, 14 years ago. We've been doing this a long time. Um, we have been conducting what's known as a profile demographic economic and housing report for the state of Nebraska, which compiles a vast, vast, like wide variety of data into one easily accessible, uh, you know, report essentially. Uh, for those of you in the planning space, um, you know, this is essentially 80% of a housing needs assessment required for a community development block funding uh, consolidated plan. Uh, this is about 70% of analysis of them as a fair housing choice. Um, and if so, if you're a planner, um, you know, the majority of your heavy lifting data analysis for your city is pretty much done, uh, county and state. Uh, we broke it down into several different areas. Uh, you can kind of see here the dashboard controls is the control main control panel for the dashboard. We can kind of see here region, county, city, state. Um, like I said before, we we've been doing this for about 13 years. Uh, back then, it was only reports. It was only printed copies. And, you know, they started off slow, low, and then we kept adding tables and adding information. And now uh, we're probably past 10,000 pages of printed documents. Uh, like I said, we break it down to the statewide where, you know, we, we in, you know, look at the statewide trends. Uh, all 93 counties in Nebraska 
<clears throat> right here, you can see them all, all get a big report if you are interested in any specific county. Um, I recommend you, before using the profile tool to download whatever area that you are interested in looking at, download the report because the report actually has a little bit more information than the actual dashboard. We're working to get those to parity, but it's just um, we keep adding more information into the report and then we have to slowly code that into the profile or the, the dashboard. <clears throat> So I'm going to, um, today for this presentation, I'm just going to focus on the city of Lincoln, which is in Lancaster County. So I'm just going to download Lancaster County, just kind of show you what one of these uh, reports look like. Uh, like I said, you can download these under the reports tab. You can also download all the historical reports going back to 2003 under here, in case you wanted to see whatever the, you know, whatever report we released in 2003. Uh, we try to keep the data history present in the new reports. So theoretically, all the data in 2003 is in the 2020 report or the 2019 report. Uh, but, you know, just in case you want to go back and get, you know, vintage. So it's slowly downloading my internet baby slow. Uh, we also do 28 cities in the, in the profile as well. And like I said, I'm going to kind of focus on Lincoln. So here we go. Maybe this will load a little faster. I guess my internet just decided to slow down. Oh, where drafts? Hmm current okay yeah so weird okay that's weird because i just had that hmm. that's very strange okay so here's a county of lancaster report uh each county is about 75 pages and you can see it's a it's a very in-depth document about demographics economics and housing in the county and in the city um and like I said we you know, the report got so big and so unwieldy that we couldn't, it was hard to kind of start finding information easily and quickly if you wanted to find information. So we built this thing called the dashboard that overlays on top of it that, um, you know, helps facilitate finding information. So we're trying to add in all the information in the written reports into the profile. Um, the profile also, or the dashboard also allows you to do uh, area to area comparison, which is super useful. Um, so without further ado, I'll just kind of start going through the dashboard um, for the city of Lincoln. Um, I don't know, as a side note, I don't know why these cities are, maybe it's city reports links seem weird. So if there's any bugs, <laughs> like I said, this is a totally new version. I played through it. I, I made sure everything was good, but if you do see anything, uh, please send them right on the welcome tab. This is my information right here. This please send bug reports here. You can also send comments or, you know, if you are playing with this dashboard and say, you know, this would be really cool if only it had X data or information, send me a, send me a report now um, or the, the folks at NIFA and we'll see if we can get that in there. Uh, we're constantly developing this. Uh, we're adding new information every year. Uh, so we want it to be as useful as possible to the end user, which is you guys. So if you want something, just, uh, you know, send knife an email and we'll see if we can get that in there for you. <clears throat> but if you Absolutely. do see any bugs, send me, yeah, send me an email and we'll get those sorted ASAP. Um, yeah, it's very strange. I'm gonna, I'm gonna control F5, see if I can get that because I know I fixed that. Weird. Um, okay. Oh man, yeah, now my internet decided to be very slow. Apologize. Yeah, current. Okay, yeah. See, I knew, I knew, I didn't lose. I, okay, I knew I didn't lose my head. All right. If you have five, the current Lincoln City is here. I knew. I swear to God, I knew that. Um, okay, so it's all there. Uh, about 57 pages for each city. Um, County is about 75 pages. Statewide is about 183. So, like I said, it adds up fast. Um, you know, and if you just want to find what's the population growth rate in X city. Um, going to the dashboard is a really easy way to do that. And then once you start clicking around, you kind of get lost and kind of go off on a, on a data voyage, which, you know, I kind of like to do. Uh, so, like I said, I'm just going to kind of go over a high level view of how to use the dashboard. Uh, there's a lot of information here. It's a rather complex tool, but you can hopefully uh, use it to get whatever information you're looking for. And like I said, if you can't, if the information you're looking for isn't in here, let NIFA know and we will do our best to get that information in here. Um, Everything's broken down, select area one, select area two. The idea here is, you know, we built it around a comparison of different areas. Um, if you select county in area two and then select city in area one, the city, well, you know, we start with A or whatever. Um, we have every, we have the 28 class one cities, which also have a written report under the reports tab. But this year, 
Um, we have 530 all cities and villages in Nebraska available to look to, to view. Um, so it was actually funny because last year, not not March, but two years ago when we actually had the conference in uh, Nebraska, I was giving this talk and there was someone in the back and she said, well, this is all great, but you don't have anything for my city. And I was like, no, we don't. I bet we could get it. So we actually listened and now we have all, all the cities and towns and villages in Nebraska. Um, so, you know, it's all right here. Um, just uh, for example, just read, just pulled up Chapman Village in Merritt County. And you can kind of see here that population is declining, uh, falling from about 336 to 285. So uh, all the cities are available and we have statewide and county. So and regions, which is kind of like a higher level uh, regional analysis of the cities. But like I said, I'm gonna kind of just focus on Lincoln only, only because that was the last place I was and we had delicious noodles and a really nice hamburger there actually, to be honest, so little, little, little things. Uh, Lincoln City is in Lancaster County. You can then download the reports here as well by just clicking the download. If you just want the Lincoln City report or the Lancaster County report, there you can download the reports right under the, the selection in case you don't wanna to go to the reports tab. Uh, the welcome screen also has these three reports. Um, they are large, as I said, volume one is the state, uh, volume two, chapter one is all the counties from A to H, and volume two, chapter two is all the counties from H to Z. Volume three is all 28 cities, and then all reports is a big zip file of everything. If you want it all, click on that button, unzip it, and you have you know 1.6 gigs of PDFs about Nebraska data. Um, there's a wealth of information here if you, you know, and like I said, I'm trying to always add more, so happy to, happy to help. Um, so like I said, I'm going to do city and county for Lincoln. Um, and then we kind of organized it, you know, a demographic, economic, and housing report. So we have these tabs up top here, demographics, economics, and housing. Uh, so I'll kind of go through there and show you what's going on with the data that we can, we can view. Um, on each one of these demographics, economics, and housing tabs, um, they're all kind of aligned the same, these three. Uh, they start with what are known as bullet charts, and we have a chart and two tables. I just want to kind of go over quickly how to read these bullet charts because there's a lot of information packed in a very, you know, very small space. Um, the, so you can see here that uh, it's, it's made up of, you know, three elements, essentially. We have the orange bar, which is the actual value for uh, the population growth, which is 11.2%. So you can actually see the population growth. Uh, the black line, the vertical black line there is the statewide average. So right now we can see the city of Lincoln has a population growth of 11.2%. And also it's quite higher than the statewide rate of about, um, you know, the statewide rate. We don't have it down here. Um, and then we rank them in for all of the cities. Uh, so out of all 530 cities, uh, Lincoln City is ranked 15th in population growth from 2010 to 2000, or 2010 to most recent 2018. So that's kind of how you read it. The, then there's these bars, the green bars at the at the behind the the yellow and and black bar, um, are quantiles um, of all the cities. So we took all 530 cities and we arranged them into equal buckets uh, based on their population growth rate or aging population of, or minority population. So they all have the same amount of cities, uh, but the dispersion of those buckets kind of tells you, well, what's, you know, what's going on in the state. Uh, we can see here that, you know, there are some really, really big areas, growing air, growth areas, you know, the, of all areas growing in population, um, you know, the dispersion of the upper quartile is, is pretty large. Uh, and then you kind of get to these middle ones. There's a lot of groupings. The groupings in the, in the lower three or four are all pretty close together. And then the, the bottom one is there. I kind of like to think about this. If you have like 10 piano players in a room, um, you know, and you have, you know, classical piano players, Chopin, you know, and then you have some jazz players, Oscar Peterson, uh, Bud Powell, um, you know, and then you have your normal high school players. And then you have, you know, your toddlers or whatever banging away on keys. Uh, the quality of their playing, is is rather dispersed and when you get into the upper echelons you know um the quality of the play might be closer together than farther apart if you have a if you have a toddler that has a you know uh, is a musical prodigy you might get a very large dispersion on on the, the bottom end um so that's kind of we wanted to put as much information to this as possible um so just quickly glancing at this you can see here that the population growth in the city of lincoln is higher than the state 
Um, it's also ranked 15th, so it's uh, one of the fastest growing. It's in the top quartile. Uh, aging population, so we did minor, uh, we did anything over 65 or 55 and older, uh, we can see is uh, relatively low. It's in the bottom quartile of the state. It's below the statewide average. And that makes sense because City of Lincoln is kind of a younger college town. There, there's a University of Nebraska there. Um, so only 23.7% uh, of the population is above 55. Uh, then we kind of look at the minority population. This is non-white minority population. Um, it's 34th out of 50, uh, 530, so it's slightly higher than the statewide rate. Um, you know, you can see here 14.8% of the population is non-white. Statewide rate is 12.5%. So this is uh, these bullet charts are available on each of the demographic, economics, and housing tabs. Um, it kind of gives you a, just a kind of quick overview of where the city, county, region or you know, is compared to its other cities or counties and also the statewide as a whole, and also where how spread out the data is. So that's available in all things. Um, now we come down to the chart. Um, we tried to make the dashboard as clickable and as interactive as possible, um, because once you start clicking on it, you start kind of you know, really getting into it and enjoying it, hopefully. Um, and so everything is clickable. Um, first things first, you can this little button down here makes it bigger which is nice when you're presenting. So now you can see. Um, everything on the chart is clickable as well. You know, you can kind of see here, Lancaster County population increase, uh, Lincoln City increased. If you click down here on the actual, um, you know, legend, um, it will add or remove series. So I don't, you know, don't want to see Lincoln County, just want to see Lincoln City right there. You just, you know, that'll add it. Um, if you're doing statewide, uh, that's a big, that's a big help because the state is so much higher. You know, you can kind of really see it's much a much higher thing. So if you just want to zoom in on one thing, that's what we want. Sorry, I'm going to go back to Lancaster County. Lancaster County, there we go. Um, and then this is fun because everything is also downloadable. Uh, you can download it as a PNG image. Let's say you want to download this chart to use in your own PowerPoint presentation. Um, you know, in front of the city council or in front of a business meeting or anything. Uh, we already have charts here made for you. Um, every single city in the state of Nebraska has charts like this. Um, so if you're in a if you're in a smaller town and don't feel like making your own charts, they're here for you. They're free. Uh, thank you, NIFA. Uh, so just available. Um, and lastly, I love this new feature. Uh, you can download the actual data, the underlying data there, the CSV file. So if you say, okay, well that's nice. I like the chart, but Gray is not really my thing. I'm more of like a magenta person. Uh, here's the data. Uh, now you can make your own chart if you're more comfortable working in Excel. Uh, the data is right there. It's all for you. Um, yeah, so the charts are a big part of this, um, you know, uh, dashboard and they're all fully clickable and, and, and playable. Uh, lastly, we have these two tables. So you can actually see the, the tabular feature. New for this year is this fun hover effect. So you can see if you click on something, uh, it'll stay hovered. So you can say and show that the population of the city of Lincoln increased from about 258,000 to about 287,000 compared to about 317,000 in the uh, county of Lancaster. So uh, everything is clickable and it's uh, hopefully fun. And, you know, we designed this with the, uh, with the idea that not only can you, you know, privately while, you know, look and click around on it, but you can go and show this off as a presentation tool. Uh, it's totally built and it's just right there available for you. So I'm just gonna kind of dive down and show you some of the demographic information that we have available in the dashboard. Um, educational attainment. So this is high school, high school equivalent, you know, associate's degree. Uh, this is Lincoln City versus Lancaster County as a whole. Uh, you can choose anything. So if you wanted to see, uh, let's see what Omaha looks like actually. educational attainment compared from Lincoln City to Omaha. We see Lincoln City has a higher rate of associate's degree. I'm gonna, this chart looks a little busy to me to figure out what's going on. I'm just gonna turn off the 2010 ACS and keep the 2018 ACS. Uh, this data comes from the United States Census. I'll just kind of do a quick overview of where the data comes from when I get to the data. Uh, the United States Census, we use 2010, you know, straight SF1 census counts. That's an actual count of the population, um, just like they're doing now. If you haven't taken the census, please do, because it makes the data and analysis so much easier when we have accurate data. Uh, but there's also something called the American Community Survey, which is kind of a rolling average where they're constantly taking, um, you know, information or a survey of the entire population. 
Uh, the American Community Survey is, you know, kind of aggregated up and analyzed in three three ways. Uh, there's a one year, a three year, and a five year. That's <laughs> early for me over here. Five year average. <laughs> um, yeah, five year average. Uh, the one year average, you know, only takes the responses for that one year. Uh, so you're actually getting the most temporarily accurate data that you can get. Uh, however, because you know, not they don't because it's a survey and they don't send out a lot of surveys. Uh, the one-year averages don't really go down to smaller level jurisdictions. You might get a couple big cities. I think it's about 50,000 people. Um, so you can't actually get data to smaller levels. Uh, the three years kind of a mix between the one and the five. No one really uses it. The five year, uh, because they take all of the responses over five years, you can actually go down to uh, census block group levels, census track levels, smaller cities. So we use the five-year average because we, we like seeing the maps and we have maps here um, or block group analysis. Um, you know, you just have to also avail, you have, just have to keep in your mind that it's an average of five years. Um, so every year the, the ACS comes out, you know, this is the 2018 ACS, so it's 2018 to uh, five years ago, 20, uh, 2013. Um, so it's kind of, if you think about it, uh, it's still sort of got a little bit of the tail end of the last Great Recession um, as we head into the next Great Recession. So maybe five year is an interesting in, interesting thing to uh, evaluate, but it's uh, that's something to think about. So I always think about it as kind of like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, where you can either know a position or the speed of a particle, but you can't know both. Just that's how you think about the one and five year estimates. Um, so that's just some survey stuff. So whenever you see the ACS in this or in the um, profile, um, you know, that's what we're talking about. The actual written report actually has, you know, has um, more detailed write-ups of where the data come from. You know, it has little blurbs about the ACS data um, here, 2010. So if you want to actually figure out what's going on and, and everything, uh, please download the written report and give that a, give that a read through. But here we see, going back to the actual um, dashboard, uh, City of Lincoln has a higher uh, in rate of those with associate's degree compared to the City of Omaha. Uh, bachelor's degrees are pretty much the same, 22.8 to 22.4, and graduate degrees are also uh, very similar. Um, I'm guessing that's a very, very different, let's just see, uh, randomly, Berwyn Village. I was born in the city of Berwyn back in Pennsylvania. Just why not? Um, yeah, we can see here, you know, if you take away the 2010 um, high school equivalent, Berwyn is actually much higher than uh, Lincoln. Um, actually the same, but bachelor's degree we see here, uh, city of Lincoln, 22.8 versus 8.1 and almost no graduate degrees here. So that's, you know, to be expected in the smaller, smaller towns. Um, go back to Lincoln County or Lancaster County. And um, I, if you do have questions as we're doing this, uh, normally I just field questions uh, live on the fly when we're doing this in the session. So please, let's just keep that up. I'm, I'm more than happy to address anything that anyone wants to say. Um, and if you have, or if you want to wait until the end to see what we do have, and then, you know, hit me up with questions there, um, that's fine. I'm not going anywhere. So I'm, I'm here all day. I'm here as long as you need me. Okay, moving down into uh, racial categories. So, you know, whenever we start looking at what's going on in a city or a town or a county, uh, we start by looking at population growth, then we look at racial breakdown and age breakdown. So here's population by race, uh, American Community Survey. Um, you know, this one I'm actually going to turn off Lancaster County, so we just see what's going on between the 2010 census and the 20, uh, 2018 five-year ACS. And we see a small decrease in uh, the white population falling from about 86 to 85.2 percent. Um, conversely, an increase at 3.8 to 4.4 percent in the African American population. Uh, overall, as a whole, you know, just to give you an idea statewide um, how the racial breakdowns occur. We see here white population 85.2 uh, versus 87.5 percent for the state of Nebraska. So that's uh, you know slightly more diverse, and we saw that here in the bullet chart where we saw it was above the statewide average. So it's good when everything kind of lines up. Um, you know we see here um, this other population. Oh wait, no, that's. I will. We'll kind of dive into why what's going on with that. Oh, now now you disappear on me. Reset zoom. All right. Uh, what's going on with this other population here? Um, well, let's do that now. Um, so it's also, like I said, we, we, we designed this to be of use to a whole, as many people as possible. Uh, if you just want to know what's going on in your city, we designed it for that. If you want to use it for, um, you know, apartment developments, 
we have specific tools for that uh, that I'll get to the report later. If you want to use this for community development and planning purposes, anything to do with HUD, uh, we designed that for this. Um, in HUD data sets, um, we have this CHAS data set that we'll get to shortly. Um, you have both a race and a ethnicity. In the census, they kind of just count it all together. Oh no, in the, in the census, you have a race and ethnicity. In the HUD data, they like to put it together. Um, I don't know why. So we have this you know, race, and then we have non-Hispanic by race and Hispanic by race. So if we're only viewing the Hispanic population by race, and we were kind of looking back at this, what's going on, we can kind of see here, there's a very large jump um, in the white population and a decrease in the other population. Now, what's actually happening here, it's not, it's not that a, Hispanic, a different group of Hispanic people uh, moved in. Um, it's because in the 2010 census, the, the question that was, you know, you get asked, what's your race? And then what's your ethnicity? Uh, was worded in a way where, you know, folks that identified as Hispanic um, felt like they needed to identify as other. When they, the ACS, the community survey rolled out, uh, they changed that question so you can actually, it's much clearer that, you know, you have a race and an ethnicity and, you know, most of people who identify as Hispanic now identify as white. So whenever you see population, you know, especially on this Hispanic by race or other population, white increasing and other decreasing, that's purely because of survey design bias. You know, that's, that's all it is, um, which is, Tim, did, yes. they, uh, did they update that for the 2020 census then? I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I yeah I sure hope so. I'm 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 assuming they did because they've been they've been using the ACS for you know ten years now. So yeah, so I'm I'm sure hoping I'm sure hoping as well. Um, so but if we just want to see you know of all Hispanic population statewide as a total, um, Hispanic identified as 10.7 percent. Um, Lincoln City is slightly less than the statewide 7.4 versus 10 percent. So that's that's this. So we have a uh, population growth. Uh, race breakdowns, race Hispanic, race, race and ethnicity breakdowns. Now we get down to the age breakdown. Uh, city of Lincoln is, you know, um, more of a college town. So we do see here, uh, I'm just going to take off the 2010 just to show statewide. Um, the 20 to 24 is 12.1% compared to the statewide of 7.2%. So that's quite a big difference. And we, you know, can clearly understand why it's a college town. So that's normally your college age. Um, the 35 to 54 is slight, you know, pretty close. And, uh, you know, overall, the statewide is a little bit, a little bit more. Um, again, that kind of tells you why what's going on with this aging population. You can see it's below the statewide rate. And you can see that there um, perfectly right here. Wait, uh, this one, 12.1 uh, versus 7.2%. So you can see like this extra percentage kind of drives them over the statewide rate for uh, aging population. You can also, um, you know, see how it's been changing over time. Um, 20 to 24%. So this is the 2010 census. It's really increased uh, quite a bit. Wait, where'd you go? Oh, that's the Nebraska. Just kidding. That's weird. Okay. It's been re uh, remaining pretty much constant, which, which you know, I could understand. Slight increase in the 20 to 24, the 20, uh, between the 2010 census and the five-year ACS. Again, this chart is fully downloadable and clickable and all sorts of fun, groovy things. So just uh, get into it if, uh, if you're in, looking for uh, demographic data on anything. Uh, we also have poverty by age and disability rate. Um, again, these are big topics for uh, planning purposes. Uh, this is the percentages of total of the population. It should be, anyway. Uh, we see a poverty rate in the city of Lincoln at 14.2% compared to the state of Nebraska at 11.6%. Um, and we can kind of see here, if you just want to see what's happening, um, the elderly population is falling a little bit. Um, actually, all population rates in the city are falling a little bit except for this 18 to 64, slightly rising 15.1 to 15.4%. So that's actually, uh, there we go. So that's kind of the only increase. Otherwise, otherwise it's looking much better. So that's good, that's good. Uh, and then we have some disabilities by age. Um, you know, uh, you know this, those for fair housing analysis in particular, uh, disability is the most cited um, you know, basis for a fair housing complaint because they can't go make a reasonable modification to um, you know, your bathroom or add a, add a ramp up to your apartment. So uh, when you're ever doing fair housing analysis or just you know, housing analysis in general, it's always good to um, disability rates. And we see here that as the age increases, disability, instance of disability uh, really increases as well. Uh, you know, a 75 or older, 
48.2% of those in the city of Lincoln um, have a disability. Now to be in, to, you know, be counted as having a disability, this is all, this is all survey data. So it's all self-reported. They send you a form and you fill it out um, to your best of your best of your knowledge or ability. Um, but to be in this chart, you have to be in disabilities tally chart. And this will give you the, the categories of disability. Um, and we can kind of see here independent living and ambulatory disability are the highest at 5.3 and 4.4. .4, well, cognitive is at 4.52. But uh, these ones you have a higher, you know, once you age, uh, you have a you know a hard time living alone or getting around. Um, cognitive disability is at 4.5%. Um, ambulatory disability statewide is at 5.9%. Man, I like these little, I like the white, I like the yellow. It's the first time I've used it, so it's kind of, kind of fun. Okay, well, that's the demographic tab. Um, does anyone have any questions while I get a little sip of coffee here? Cool. Doesn't look like I'm like we have any right now, Tim. All right, cool. All right, economics. So um, in the written report, we have what's known as the quarterly census of employment and wages report um, for counties uh, that reported that data is unavailable for city level. Uh, the BEA data is also only available for counties and unavailable for city level. So that's why, and that's why we only have four things for the city. Um, if you look for the county, um, should all come back. Um, you know, we have labor force statistics, and then all of these income statistics for the county, because BEA data is only available at the county level. So if we wanted to see, um, you know, average earnings per job for the county, uh, we're in Adams County now. Uh, although I want to, I will kind of want to stick with my Lincoln Lancaster vibe. So, ah, ah, yeah, groovy. Okay, so uh, we can kind of see here. Oh, that doesn't want to, doesn't want to zoom. Um, that you know, average earnings per job um, has been increasing pretty steadily. Lancaster County lagging slightly below the state of Nebraska as a whole. Um, I'm guessing this is, you know, we had some big corn prices there um, going up. Yeah, so that yeah, you can really see that there. Yeah, you can see you can really see that. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. Um, average earnings per job, farm employment earnings. So state really here. Yeah, you can see that in 2010. Oh, it drives me nuts. I'm fixing that button right after this. Um, you know, in 2010, their average farm wage or earnings per job was 129,000, um, and then in you know 2013 again at 135,000. So that's quite a big. Those are big numbers. These are statewide. Yeah, I was like, where's the button? Yeah, those are yeah, those are big numbers. Um, you know, but then we've been seeing decreasing, falling to 39,000. So that's quite a big of a change statewide. Uh, Lancaster County, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily rely so heavily as farming as the other as the other areas of the state so it's a little lower uh so this whole you know all of the ba data you know evaluates earnings and wages uh for based on 21 industry classifications and we have average earnings per job for all of them uh employment by industry um so you can actually see employment so here's uh you know farm employment in lancaster county um they're all here it's all downloadable uh, manufacturing employment, and then the actual just total earnings. Now these numbers are huge. Um, you know they're very big because it's all of the earnings in the state, so it, they're they're big numbers. Um, so that's why we kind of do. It's easier to understand average earnings per job because you take all of the earnings, divide it by the total number of jobs, and that kind of gives you more a better idea of than like you know 1.2 billion dollars. Who knows? Um, so that's why we have that there. Uh, so average earnings per job statewide per capita income. This is a kind of a broader measure of wealth. It's all of your income sources. So if you own apartments and get rent, if you own stocks and, and receive dividends. If you, any time, any way that you make money, uh, that is that is included in the total income. And then it's divided by the total population, whether you're working or not. Or, you know, the average earnings per job is just those working at a job. So you can kind of you can see here that total per capita income has been increasing pretty steadily. And rising up to about 49,899, the most recent 2018 stuff, slightly less than the 53,263 state of Nebraska. So, like I said, that data is all there and available for counties and the state and the region. Uh, it's all in real dollars. We deflated it to 2019 dollars. So, um, so you can actually compare dollars back in 1972 to dollars of today. Um, going back to cities, oh boy, let's see if this. I wonder if, that, let's see if this works. 
Lancaster. Where'd you go, Lincoln? Aha, Groovy. Yes. So um, to make things more interesting, um, the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is our, you know, your gold standard for reporting uh, unemployment rate um, and, and labor force data, um, only they don't report that information for all the cities. They only report it for larger cities. So um, where available in the dashboard, you will get this unemployment rate and employment for labor force statistics. Um, and this is kind of, you know, when you see the unemployment rate reported in the news, this is where it comes from. Um, when you get to smaller cities around the state, uh, that is no longer available. We see here uh, Lincoln City versus state of Nebraska. Um, this is the height of the great, the last great recession, um, you know, 4.6, which was really, really small compared to the statewide, I mean, the, the national average and other areas around the country. Uh, Nebraska did uh, remarkably well during the, the last 2009. And then, you know, right around this period, you had that huge, huge bump in uh, corn grain prices. So that you guys weathered very well. Um, and then we've been seeing a steady decrease in the unemployment falling to 2.5% the most uh, in the 2018 stuff. Uh, this chart is going to look very, very different next time that we meet uh, because we, you know, the unemployment rate <laughs> with COVID, um, this axis over here, this five will not be five. It'll be much, much higher, three or four times higher than that. Um, it's just what it's going to look like on the downslope. Um, for the next profile dashboard, we will have monthly unemployment figures in here. Um, it's, it's on my list um, of, of improvements. Um, so one quick note about this. Um, anytime you see the unemployment rate, it's going down. That's great. Um, that's what you want to see. You want to see unemployment going down or at least leveling off at a very low average. 2.5% is, is below the theoretical full employment level. Uh, so you start you start having to pay more wages to pull people away from jobs. Uh, so it's very low. But you always need to look at the employment and labor force data that is underlying that, because you can actually have a decrease in unemployment rate if your employment is if your labor force is falling. Sorry, I'm working. On, if your labor force is falling faster than employment, and they're both falling, you can have a decrease in unemployment. Um, and I've seen that in a lot of different areas around the uh, around the state, around the country. Um, however, good news, it's not happening here. We do see a, both an increase in employment and labor force. Um, you know, labor force rising at 156,000, uh, you know, employment also rising 152,000. So whenever you see that unemployment rate figures, you always want to check out, well, what's actually happening with the labor force and employment trends? Because if employment is, if labor force is falling faster than employment and they're both could be falling, um, you could still be getting a decrease in unemployment rate, but it's actually masking what's happening. Um, you know, what's going on. Uh, statewide, just to see what's going on. Again, we see here, um, it's good. Uh, it's kind of a level off right here between employment and labor force, but they're kind of rebounding and increasing. Uh, the difference between these two lines, the, act, the area is the number of people unemployed. So that, that's the actual unemployment. And you can kind of see that here, that tooltip will get out of the way, um, you know, where that dip down in the employment is right around here. That's where your unemployment rate spiked because you see a decrease in employment. So the area between the two curves increased. So that's all fun. Uh, but like I said, that data is unavailable for uh, the vast majority of cities and uh, villages in the, in um, what's going on, Ashton Village in uh, the state. So uh, we added um, two data points for uh, just so all the cities could have some economic information, uh, employment by industry and employment. This data is also available for every for all the counties and state and bigger cities. Uh, but I just wanted to point out, you know, in a smaller a smaller city. Um, here we see this is a bubble chart based on employment and earning, earnings based on the 2018 five year American Community Survey. So this is self reported. But um, I'm just going to take that away. The state is so much bigger. You can see here the size of the bubble is uh, the, the percentage share of the population employed in that industry. Um, and the industries are listed as 21 classifications in, in the BEA. Um, and then you know, on this axis is the median earnings, and then the employment is on the bottom axis. So you can kind of see here, the bubbles over here represent larger, not only larger share, but also larger um, employment sectors, healthcare, uh, manufacturing, and retail are the largest uh, employers in the city or in Ashton Village. Uh, transportation uh, has a very is has the highest uh, median earnings at sixty thousand, uh, employing ten people, and then we have smaller kind of uh, you know smaller, smaller things. These uh, these 
I tried to, I tried to, even if they, sometimes with a, with this uh, survey data in smaller areas, uh, they can't actually report all the information just because they don't, it's so small, you could actually reverse engineer who's, who's what, you know what I mean? So they kind of, they try to hide the data in, in cases like that. So that's why we see here at this finance, um, you know, there's two people employed, but they put the earnings at zero just because they didn't want people to be able to figure out, oh yeah, it's, you know, Joe and Ted, they're making, they're making a good, good deal over there. So um, that's why whenever you see zero, um, that's why it's kind of hidden, hidden there. So, but just to, com you know, compare that to state of Nebraska, uh, we see here uh, healthcare, um, largest employment, according to ACS, followed by manufacturing, uh, retail. Um, these are all pretty, you know, 42,000, 40,000 paying jobs. Uh, finance, 52,000. Uh, education, 49,000. Construction, 43,000. So you have kind of these clusters, manufacturing, healthcare, largest employers, um, retail, a little third, third highest, but a little lower on the median earnings. Then you have this cluster of uh, finance, employment, and construction right there. Um, utilities is always the highest for whatever reason. I don't, don't know if it's, you know, gold-plated average, it's a state-run monopoly or what, you know, it's just always <laughs> in the data, it's just always the highest. Um, and then we see here management is also normally very high, but it's always very low. Uh, uh, um, employment, it's got a high median earnings in employment. Uh, mining is doing pretty, you know, mining is also has a higher median earnings, but very low employment rate. Uh, and farming, you know, is a uh, about 40,000 with about uh, 33,000 people um, in the ACS data for farming. So I really like this chart because it kind of gives you a snapshot of what's going on. It's available for every city and village in the state um, and it's downloadable. Don't forget that. Don't forget it's downloadable. Oh, but it looks like I forgot to change the color on the, the back. We'll get that taken care of. Um, the other one that I wanted to add was this in unemployment, because like I said, for these smaller villages, the Bureau of Labor, Sy Bureau of Labor Statistics data is unavailable. Um, so in the American Community Survey, they do do some sort of unemployment rate average, and here it is. Um, it's kind of hard to see, because uh, you know this is of all the people, so employed and not in the labor force, um, unemployed, but the unemployment rate is 3.6%. So it, uh, the, unemployment, the unemployment rate doesn't factor into the people not in the labor force. You're only counted in the unemployment rate if you're looking for a job. If you don't wanna look for a job and you're just laying on the couch, you're not technically unemployed. Um, so that's why that's why you kind of see here unemployed is 3.6% up here versus, uh, oh no, that I did that right. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if you actually did some, some math, you might see some other things. And then there's armed forces as, as well. So this is available for all the cities in the states. Uh, we also see bullet charts here um, in the city of Ashton Village. Um, they are ranked 392,000 out of 530 cities for their er er earnings, average earnings of about 35,000. Um, they're in the second to bottom uh, quartile um, and below the statewide average right there, about 44,000. Unemployment rate, they are above the statewide average, 3.6% uh, um, versus 2.8% in the American Community Survey. So it's different than the BLS data, um, but they're slightly higher. So slightly lower earnings, higher unemployment in the city of Aston Village. So like I said, it's all here. It just keeps going. It's kind of, yeah, so um, yes. We go back to Lincoln. Cool. Okay. So that's uh, economics, and I'll just kind of move right on to housing. Roy said I had so much time, but now I'm looking like, do I have time? I, I don't know. So okay. Two, um, two quick, they're, they're... Uh, quick things, Tim, before you go on. Uh, yeah. Number one, do you know if uh, 2019 ACS data is ever going to come out, or are we just going to have to wait for 2020? I'm guessing it should. It normally comes out in December, so I'm guessing who who I'm guessing they're already processing it. You know, it should it should drop December. I haven't heard any. I haven't I haven't seen anything. I'm on I'm on the list from. And census. then real quick, could you show us uh, the region's capabilities? Yes. Um, yes. Lancaster region. Um, we have all of the you know all of the regions here, and then let's see. I didn't test out the custom regions. Oh no. Let's see about that. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I guess that, that one didn't get into this release. We will have that taken care of. Okay, yes. Um, what Royce is talking about is we do have a custom region aggregating function um, in this, this uh, you know, in the, in the profile. Um, let me write that down. 
when we push this new version out, I guess I didn't get get into it. Let me just write that down. Check. Okay. But yes, um, later today, if you log back on, you will find that you can uh, go down to a region um, and create a custom region based on your uh, counties. And uh, you'll be able to evaluate county level data uh, based on a custom region of any collection of counties that you like. And that will be live later today. I apologize that that one didn't get in here. Um, let me let me just what was that? Oh, on the fly live. I can just chime in here. This is John. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to chime in and say the nice yeah. thing about uh, the custom regions would be uh, there are continuum of care regions, there are regional behavioral health regions, and uh, the development districts. So uh, that's a real handy tool for all those different groups. Yes. Yeah, and just to give you an idea that this was the the dashboard up till last afternoon. So we we will make sure that this functionality gets patched in by today. Um, so you can you can play around with it in Nebraska 2019. Um, so yeah, in case you know you wanted to, you know, make a, a very interesting region of like kind of like a smiley face, um, you can do that, and then all the data will be available for that region and uh, downloadable. So if yeah, if you're in a continuum of care or you know a housing trust fund or something uh, based on uh, regional jurisdictions that are not the standard regions, you can download that and and, and look at that data. Um, yes. Shortly. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, All right. We, we will have that patch fixed up ASAP. I I'll get my team on that. Yes. Always keeping me on my toes, Rice. <laughs> That's my job. That's great. Okay. Uh, okay. So housing. You know, uh, Knife is a housing organization. So actually, we have a massive amount of housing data. Um, you know, single family permits. Uh, what I want to highlight because I, I I do see my my clock. Are we technically going to nine thirty? Or it would be uh, we are we are good until eleven thirty our time, which is okay. nine thirty your time. Okay. However, well, oh, I, I do have save save ten or fifteen minutes at the end for questions. We'd appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, uh, single family. You know, we have a whole bunch of housing data. Um, it is a like I said, a housing institution, or so um, we focus on housing. Um, <clears throat> I just want to highlight. The rental vacancy survey first, and then we can go through the single family permits and things. Uh, so we have been conducting a rental vacancy survey throughout the state of Nebraska since 2002. Uh, we have a little call center in the back of my office when we had an office um, where we try to call every single uh, apartment or you know single family home that is available for rent, and we call them and we ask, "Hey, how many units do you have? 50. How many are available? Two. Um, what's the average rent? What's their bedroom size?" a whole slew of information based on the rental market. Um, and we are doing that as we speak. So if you guys get a call, if you're in the housing market, um, and if you own rental properties and you get a call from NIFA about a rental housing market survey, uh, that's us calling you to try to get this information. Um, like I said, we've been doing it through 2002. Uh, so we have a lot of data. Um, on my development notes that I will be doing, I will be making a rental vacancy survey tab. So next time we meet, hopefully in March, uh, you'll see a tab dedicated to this data source because it's um it's probably one of the best data sets for rental markets in the country. Uh, we do this every year and we're very thorough. It's it's um we try to call as many people as possible. Um, in the dashboard we have uh you know one two three four uh, maybe maybe five or six concepts. In the actual written report we have a lot of tables wherever those went to survey of rental properties. Um, yeah, so you can see Lincoln City, you know, goes back to 2002, and we can see a whole bunch of information um, in the written prop in the in the written report. I'm I'm about I'm, you know my my coding project this uh, this fall will be putting these tables in the dashboard, um, so you have all that information going back as far as we have, and we can kind of see trends because uh, the the data in the profile is you know it's great and it's it's you know comprehensive, but uh, there's no way to trend. Um, because the tables get too messy. So we'll have some trend analysis in the dashboard. But if you want to see anything, uh, download, like I said, download the report. You can see single family units by number of bedrooms, 
uh, average rents and uh, vacancy rates. Um, but what we have here, you know, um, we have a couple of those 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 things: Lancaster region, going to city, Lincoln City for vacancy rate versus state of Nebraska. You kind of see here, uh, state of Nebraska has a vacancy rate of 4.5 percent. Uh, city of Lincoln about 3.7 percent, um, decreasing. You know, pretty big decrease. If you drew a trend line through there, you'd get a good good downward trend with a level off there. So that's good. Uh, like I said, it's all available for download and everything. Uh, when you evaluate the market rate rents, this is the average rent um, based on unit. So single family rents, you know, a house or something, about $1,048 in the city of Lincoln uh, compared, uh, the apartment rent was 803. If you wanna look at statewide versus the city of Lincoln, uh, Lincoln apartments are higher on average in the state, 803 versus uh, 712, uh, single family, let's see, ah, go away. Single family, uh, Nebraska rent is 879, Lincoln City is uh, 1,048. So, you know, it's a more urban area, commands more uh, higher rents than the statewide average, that, that kind of makes sense. Uh, then we have, you know, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom rents based on unit size or, you know, I mean, unit type, uh, single family uh, versus apartment, two bedroom, single family, uh, where are you? Two bedroom, uh, single family in city of Lincoln is 858. Uh, apartment rent, uh, 775. You know, and again, you can track that with the state. It's a little messy when you have all the, the curves on, but you can really see here, uh, apartment rent. City of Lincoln apartment rent has been decreasing for two bedrooms. Uh, state has been increasing slightly. So, you know, you can really kind of start digging in and, and really see, wow, you know, the, the rental cost has really increased for apartments quite a bit since 2013, you know. So, uh, you know, all this data is available here. Um, it's available in the, the reports. Um, and I will be programming a much more comprehensive rental vacancy needs survey tab in the in the future. So when we meet again in March, it should be there. Uh, so this is a really uh, great tool. I know HUD uses it um, to set, you know, fair market rents because it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big, huge database. Um, side note on this, we are calling now, like I said, um, and we are helping NIFA identify uh, eviction problems throughout the state. Um, we've added three or four eviction questions based on, you know, COVID-19. Um, you know, number one, are your units behind on <clears throat> rent? Uh, what's and how many units? Um, are you anticipating uh, evictions over the next coming months and how many units? And have you done any rent reduction? Um, and what is the uh, average rent reduction? So we should have some data uh, popping up about that. Um, and we've been feeding that to NIFA in real time to kind of push that out to get help to these, help to, um, you know, anyone who needs it. There's a, a, some programs coming up. <clears throat> okay, so rental vacancy survey is great. I love it. Um, but we can also look at what's going on with housing production. Uh, single family permits. So anytime that you want to build a unit, you have to file a permit. You do the paperwork, uh, and you know you file it with your local city, and then the city sends it to the federal government, or the federal government collects it and makes it available for analysis. So that's what we see here. Um, you know, can we can really see here this single family permit? So we're talking about housing. If we just want to look at city of Lincoln, um, we can see here this is the average value. This excludes cost of land and lot. This is just the the, the you know construction and materials. Uh, labor and materials, 229,000. It's been trending upward pretty straight, you know, and this is also real dollars. So this has been trending upward pretty constantly. Um, that kind of also tracks with what we've been seeing in the rent vacancy survey. Not that these are rental properties, but you know, if you're building more expensive units, the units that exist will be more expensive. Um, this is an interesting thing that I have seen in a lot of areas around the country. Um, this area, um, these the, the bar is the actual uh, number of units permitted and we see a big build up kind of before the great recession the housing collapse the housing bubble um although it kind of started tapering off a little bit before it hit because the housing crisis hit in 2008 and 2019 but we see here you know a steady decrease and then a slight increase but if you kind of draw a line uh, right around here this is kind of like the new normal um for single family housing production uh, when we look at the state as well same sort of trend um you know not just in the city but in the state we see a, a big build up before the housing bubble 
a, co a collapse and crash makes sense. That happened in a lot of places around the country. But this kind of new trend at a lower level of housing production with a higher value. Um, so, you know, housing, like anything, is uh, based on supply and demand. If supply continues to increase, or I mean, if demand can continues to increase, uh, you know, prices go up. Uh, but we're seeing here, you know, demand is increasing because population is increasing and growing. You need a place to live. But the actual supply has been kind of, it hasn't been keeping up with that, that demand because it's kind of at this new solid state, this new trend level here that corresponds back to the early 90s. So we're seeing, um, you know, that's where you kind of get into housing affordability issues is where you see increased demand but your supply drops off based on the housing um, you know, bubble, but doesn't ever really come back up and kind of gets into this new sort of normal at a lower level, you know, based on pre nineties, late, you know, pre, yeah, if you track back, it's like early nineties stuff. While that, while these houses, you know, there's less of them, but they're also more expensive because single family value is up. So that's why you kind of get this perfect storm for housing affordability issues in a home buying market. Um, and that's, that's statewide and, in the city as well okay um you know then we break it down by duplex triplex not a lot of those multifamily units um these are you know uh, apartment buildings Eat, these are units and not buildings so if you have an apartment complex with 100 units this represents 100 units uh city of lincoln is like I said um you know is a college town so it does have a higher uh, vacancy or a higher apartment share and we do see increasing uh, some decent building of apartment complexes um, what's interesting is the the average unit for an apartment is 120,000 in the city versus uh, 73,000 for statewide. So I guess well it's it's not too confusing because you know more urban areas, more people live there, higher demand, so an increase. But you know so we see that. Okay. That single family and permit housing production uh, rental vacancy survey is what's happening in the rental housing market. Um, and then, but we can start evaluating what's going on with housing characteristics. What do these houses look like? Um, and we see here, you know, in the city of Lincoln, 65.7% uh, 60, uh, are single family units uh, compared to 76.6% overall. So in the city, you know, we have less single family units, more, more apartments, about a quarter of all housing stock in the city is, a, is an apartment versus 15.4% statewide. Again, makes sense, it's a more urban area. Uh, but you can see that here, and then you can also see here increasing there um yeah quite a big quite a big ah, let's see if i can uh, you don't want to zoom okay right there um let me just kind of look at the home value rent and ownership rate hmm, looks like i need to clean up that access i'll put that down clean up access uh we see here that the home value this is meaning the home value for home ownership is uh, it's higher than the statewide rate at about uh, you know, uh, 161,000. It's ranked 13 out of all 530 cities in Nebraska. Uh, so you can see that there. Uh, the rental rate, according to the, uh, the five-year American Community Survey, is uh, $699, ranked 21st out of all the cities. And uh, home ownership rate of about 57.3%. Um, that's much lower than the statewide rate and in the bottom quartile, which makes sense. We see that here. With a uh, you know half of the, or a quarter of their apartment a quarter of their housing stock being apartments, it makes sense that home ownership rate would be lower. Um, so that's there. We can kind of dig into this. Oh, okay, and then we can see tenure. You know, we obviously would expect to uh, expect uh, renter occupied housing to be slightly higher than owner occupied owner occupied statewide, 42.7 versus 33.9 percent. That's that's to be expected. Let me see here. Um, Households by income. Now, this one is interesting. This one's interesting because we see these big jumps here. And this is not just, you know, this is not just part of Nebraska. I see this in all most data sources. I mean, most jurisdictions I work in, when I look at the slide, I see this big jump here, um, you know, where the percentage share of $100,000 or more is, is, is having a big increase. Um, Side note on this table though, um, it, these are not adjusted for inflation. So there's some inflationary pressures where the dollars today are worse, worth less than dollars yesterday. So you have to make more to have the same sort of standard of living. That's certainly taking, taking a, a part of this. But at the same time, it's also, you know, there is some, uh, some movement there. And we see here, um, you know, in the 2010, so this is the 2010 five-year American Community Survey, 2005 to 2010, 15.7 uh, to 23.3. 
um, versus 16 to 24.7. Um, when we're looking at uh, lower incomes, we do see less than 15,000 falling. Again, uh, you know, that's that's good, but at the same time, that's probably some inflationary effects um, as well. So um, this 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 one's an interesting table. Uh, in the 2010 census, they neglected to ask about income. So um, you can't do any of these this kind of analysis based on census data. So that's, you know, actual 2010 census data. So that's why we use the 2010 five-year ACS data because that's the only way you can get kind of income, temporal income comparisons with census data. Kind of a bummer, but we do what we can. Uh, vacant housing units. Um, so, you know, these are interesting because, uh, let's see here, go away. Um, vacant housing units are, you know, when we go back to this slide, uh, housing by tenure, uh, occupied plus vacant equals total housing units. So when you zoom in on the disposition of vacant housing units, we're just looking at the 6,134. What's going on with those units? Are they in the market? Are they out of the market? Um, we always want to look at that because, you know, housing, like I said, is a supply and demand issue. If there's unused supply capacity just sitting there, um, you might want to know about it so you can bring that back into the marketplace. Um, it's great because my neighbor's house has been completely vacant for 10 years, which blows my mind. And they finally, someone has finally bought it and is now bringing it back into the market. Um, so it, it's, it was always a great example because um, most, of, most of the disposition of vacant housing units are no problem uh, for rent, for sale, uh, rented, sold, not occupied, uh, seasonal, recreational use. I guess it's easier to see here. Uh, for migrant workers, uh, these are all totally fine. They're already in the market. Um, seasonal re or recreational use. This is where I've seen Airbnb pop up in the data set. So I sometimes get that question, where do the Airbnbs, they go under seasonal and occasional use. Uh, but when you get down to other vacant, that's, um, I love it because the, the, the actual definition is none of the above. So it's kind of like choose your own adventure. Uh, but it's, it's you know, housing units that are not in the marketplace. Uh, they could be foreclosure. They could just be dilapidated and not, um, you know, livable or ha habitable. Uh, they could be ghost owners, like, you know, somebody owns a house and moves to Florida. They don't, they don't care and just leave it sitting there. So these uh, represent possible, um, you know, physical units that you can, can either demo to get the land um, or you can rehab to, you know, bring back into the marketplace. So that's why we always kind of talk about these uh, 2,000 units. And we do see here an increase rising from about 20% of all vacant units to 33.2% of all vacant units of other vacant in the city. So, um, you know, it just kind of points to, well, what's going on there? Oh my God, we just keep, there's so much. It just keeps going, it's great. Um, okay, 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 take a breath. So moving on to, I'm gonna kind of loop this in with uh, one of the other, uh, tabs here. Um, housing problems. <clears throat> housing problems are a HUD defined term um, and they kind of loop in about housing affordability. You have a housing problem if you have, um, you know, if you're, if you have a, if you're lacking complete kitchen facilities or plumbing facilities, like you don't have a, um, in a refrigerator or a sink. Um, so we can kind of see here, there's uh, 1,128 units that don't have a kitchen or sink or don't have a refrigerator or sink. Uh, you have a housing problem if you're lacking plumbing facilities, 446. Like you don't have a sink next to your toilet. I'm hoping there's a toilet there, but if you don't have a toilet, you definitely have a housing problem. Just putting that out there. Uh, overcrowding is where you have more than one, point, one person per room in your dwelling unit. Uh, you're severely overcrowded if you have more than 1.5 persons per room. Um, but the, you know, and those are all bad, especially not having a toilet. That's bad. Overcrowding is also bad, especially if you don't get along with roommates. But uh, the most serious and you know, unfortunately, most prevalent cause or housing problem are cost burdens. Cost burden is when you spend above 30% of your income on housing costs, and you are severely cost burdened when you spend above 50% of your income on housing costs. So if you're severely cost burdened, you're spending above 50% of your income, so over half your paycheck on housing costs. Uh, you are a couple of miss, you know, you're a couple of missed paychecks away of possibly experiencing homelessness. Um, and you know, the literature and everyone knows, certainly those working in this field, that it's just cheaper to keep people in their houses than to rehome them, or rehouse them. So, um, you know, when we start looking at housing affordability issues, homelessness issues, I always try to start with severe housing costs, or severe cost burden, 
and kind of work backwards. Uh, we have, to make things more interesting, uh, we have housing problems listed here under the housing tab. Uh, these are from the 2010 ACS and the 2018 ACS. So you can kind of see uh, temporal, uh, what's happening temporally, uh, you know, are they changing? Cost burden in the city of Lincoln is decreasing, falling from 17.8 to 16%. Uh, severe cost burden is falling from 13.3 to 12.3%. So that's good, um, according to this. Um, but we also have this new, yeah, uh, tab, CHAZ. Um, this is new for this year. I'm very excited about it um, because, you know, <laughs> it's it's a lot of data. And it's a lot of data about very important things. Uh, this data set, the Comprehensive Housing Affordability Strategy data set, is put out by HUD uh, for specifically for consolidated planning purposes. So CDG, CDGB funding, home funding, uh, housing needs assessments, um, those kind of things uh, rely heavily on CHAS data. But it's also how you can kind of see, well, um, what, you know, housing affordability issues by a whole variety of different, um, you know, not only income, but classifications. So I'm just gonna kind of jump to that Chaz because it's still in the housing thing. And then we'll work through a couple of uh, um, the, the mapping and then I'll probably end up perfectly on time for questions. Um, <clears throat> see, I always try to have a joke, you know, um, you know, C, C is for comprehensive, you know? And I thought that was a joke. And I saw that to my wife, she's like, no, that's not a joke, that's just a definition. So that's the joke, no? Okay, it doesn't play as well over Zoom. Okay, Royce is, Royce is giving me a no, okay. Okay, you can tell the coffee's kicked in, so. Okay, so comprehensive housing affordability strategy data set. Uh, based on housing problems of those four conditions, uh, lack and complete plumbing, kitchen, overcrowding, cost burden. Um, if you have one of those, you have a housing problem and you're in this slide. Uh, we can see here, um, oh, and we're also broken down by owner, renter in total and by income level. Uh, this is 30% of uh, housing area median family income all the way up to 100 plus in the total. Um, you, can, you can assume, you know, and it makes sense that, you know, the lower income you have, the higher prevalence of a cost burden you would have or, and, and therefore a housing problem. And, um, you know, you can see that here. Um, overall in the city of Lincoln, there are about 10,243 uh, units with a housing problem, um, owner occupied, uh, 22,000 renter occupied. And when you go to total, there are a total of 33,000 housing units, households in the city of Lincoln experiencing um, a housing problem. Now I like using the percentages because then you can actually see what's going on a little bit more. Um, overall, of all households, uh, about a third, a little under a third, 30% has a housing problem um, compared to 26 point, 26% statewide. So the city of Lincoln, you know, we saw, you know, if you think back to the permit slide, we saw increased, um, you know, decreased production, increased um, single family permit value and renter value. We saw the, uh, the apartment values going up. Um, so that just kind of corresponds to higher rents. We've also seen higher rental rates in the rent, rental vacancy survey. So that's just, you know, and incomes haven't been keeping up, although it's interesting because that income slide showed that incomes were increasing. But uh, here we do see, um, you know, cost burden about 30.4 30 compared to 26.4. Uh, when you're doing consolidated planning work, then you want to see, well, uh, is there any sort of racial or ethnic classes that have a disparate share of housing problems? We see here of all white households, 28.3%, less than jurisdiction average, have a housing problem. Uh, African-American households, um, 20 percentage points higher. So um, half of all African-American households in the city of Lincoln are experiencing a housing problem. Um, and then also Hispanic, only 10 percent points higher than the jurisdiction average. Uh, Native Americans also 50. So you can see here, um, 20 point higher, 20 percentage points higher. We would say uh, that that uh, African Americans and Native American Indians are experiencing a, a housing problems at a disparate rate within the city of Lincoln. Um, you know, and then but we also have without housing problems. So you can see, 70% uh, of white households don't have. You know, it's the, the opposite of the, uh, the last slide we just saw. Um, you know, uh, but then when we break it down by a whole bunch of other things, uh, that's, that's housing problems. These are severe housing problems. So when you really want to see, you know, just like I was saying, the severe cost burden, the severe problems, severe overcrowding or severe cost burden, um, it's a lower number, but still 15.2%. When you're looking at renters, 26%. Oh, so that's almost a quarter of the renter population in the city of Lincoln has a severe housing problem paying above 50% of their income on rents. Now, you know, keep in mind the city of Lincoln is a college town. 
And I don't know, I didn't have much money in college, so um, that probably <laughs> factors quite a bit into it as well. Um, we also have by problem type. Like I said, it's of these four problem types. I like this slide because you can really kind of see, well, yeah, okay, lack and complete plumbing and kitchen only occurs, you know, that's only less than 1% of all households. Uh, and then you kind of ramp up and see cost burden is 15.2 and severe cost burden is 12.1. Uh, so this, uh, you know, that represents, you know, 27% of all households have a cost burden or severe cost burden. And if you actually want to see the value, there's, you know, where you really jump in and say, okay, of all the households in the city of Lincoln, um, 13,265 13, are actually, go away, um, so have a severe cost burden and may be at risk of uh, experiencing uh, homelessness, um, you know, in the future. That's why the, the, these eviction programs are, are interesting. Now that I think about that, let me see what's going on in the city of Grand Island, just because Grand Island has a, in our, you know, very preliminary eviction stuff, we've seen uh, a relatively higher amount of issues in Grand Island. Okay, not too bad. 11.9 uh, and 12.2%, so slightly less than that. Values, City of Grand Island, uh, 2,250 households in the City of Grand Island have a severe cost burden. And I, and I like I said, I only mentioned that because we do see kind of a creeping up instances for those units that are behind on rent in the most preliminary RVS day. I don't even know if I was supposed to share that. I just start talking and can't stop, sorry. Okay, um, and then we kind of broke broke it down by uh, family type. This is, um, this is important because uh, when we're talking about elderly families, you know, a lot of them are on fixed income. Um, you know, you, you're either you're, you're living off your retirement savings and Social Security. Um, and then if housing costs around you start increasing and you're on a fixed income, you could start becoming, you know, cost burden or severely cost burden, even if you own your own home. And here we do see uh, elderly family, luckily, is uh, less than the jurisdiction average. An elderly non-family is also less. Uh, small family, 12.6 is, is higher for owner occupied in the city of Grand Island. Just to keep things keep the continu continuity flowing, Lincoln City, uh, back to cost burden by family type, owner 10.4% versus 10.8% statewide. Uh, small family, again, is the highest, 18.7% hmm. have, a, have a cost burden. Severe cost burden, only 5.2%, that's good. Uh, small family, 10.8%. So small family, you know, um, that's like your family of four, you know, two kids and, and two, to adults, uh, they are experiencing a higher incidence of severe cost burden in the city of Lincoln, um, also statewide. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, almost, yeah, over double. So small families, you know, the fa families with kids um, are experiencing a severe cost burden at almost double the rate statewide for homeowners, owners. Um, that's why NIPA and <laughs> is such a great, great resource for, uh, you know, first time home buyers to, to help you know, people get into housing that they can afford and hopefully bring that number down. Uh, renters, severe cost burden renters, 18.5% uh, of the state versus 22.8% uh, of Lincoln City. Uh, small family, again, 30.6. So that small family is, is quite, is popping up a lot. Okay, so that's Chaz. And then we have, you know, cost burden by race, uh, very similar to the housing problem by race we saw at the first slide. Um, and this this will just show you, you know, you can kind of just zoom across uh, white population, 15.15% versus African American population, 26.8%, um, and Native American, 27.8%. Um, just a side note: if you've ever used these tables, the tables number one don't sum, and each table is different, so you can't actually put the numbers together. So if you see, if you're playing around with this and you see the values are slightly different, um, that's why because each table is its own like mini kingdom. Just roll with it, and you know, well, you know. That's why the percentages are so nice because everything's more comparable between tables. So that's the Chaz data set. Okay. Oh no. Real quick. I just spent a few minutes talking about uh, mapping. If, if yes, like, yeah, sir. I was just going to jump into mapping land. Okay. Uh, lastly, we have a huge mapping thing. Also on my development block is to put some additional mapping layers. We're hoping to get some street level stuff so you can actually see what's going on and where things are. 
Uh, so the mapping tab is really fun. Uh, we also have maps, bubble clouds, and I will get to the migration tab. Um, that one's really fun. Uh, so we have a whole slew of things to map, population, population growth, um, and you know, raids, ace, population by age. When uh, down here, when you see track level data is available, that means uh, you know it's a census data concept, and we are it's available at the, the census track level. Um, so then you just kind of click on whatever one you want to see, and please load up. Of course, must have broke. Oh my God, always. See, I should have started first with the mapping. Mapping. All right, population by age. Sometimes I just click too fast. What? Oh my God. Okay, good. Yes, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I'm too fast for the computer. Okay, so here we go. These are the census tracts for the city, uh, the county of Lancaster. Yes, um, that, that are right down here. And we can kind of see this a population by age, um, you know, 65 total. Um, you know, we if you remember back uh, to the you know previous slides, we knew that the age, population age range 20 to 24 was higher than the statewide rate. So then we can kind of see here. Uh, this census tract right here has a 31.2% um, are of this age population. I'm guessing that's very close to where the campus is. That's why I'd like to get a, a layer on there so you ha can actually identify what's going on and where things are. Um, you know, most people don't know which census tract they live in. I, I don't. Um, but you can kind of see that here, um, 20, 20 to 24. Um, disabilities tallied. Um, back to the back to the counties, all the counties are available. Um, this is also fun because you can, you know, download the map. Slowly, my internet must just not be happy right now. Okay. But you can also, like I said, download the data. So in case you want to map your own stuff, oh, okay. uh, you know, on the county, that's not as, you know, that's not as helpful. This is county population by age. But if you go back into, oh my God, request entity too large, or too big. Okay. If you dive back into the census tract data, so if you want census tract data for your own mapping purposes, you can get that here. That's really great. Um, and you can get the census tracts just within a certain county. And it's all right here. And um, these are FIP identifiers. So the first two digits are the state, and then the second three are the county. So 31, Nebraska, 109 is the county of Lincoln. And then this is your census tract data right here, the last six. So in case you didn't know where the FIP was, now you know. Um, so, but that's all available there. In case you want to download and you have your own mapping systems, it's right here for you. Just grab it. Um, the more people that use this, the more, you know, the better. I want, you know, absolutely. Oh, we have a whole bunch of stuff, housing by problems, housing units by type. Um, so let's say, you know, you want to see where the local concentration of apartments are in uh, Lancaster County. Those are single family homes, apartment units. Come on. Aha. You can kind of see here, if you remember, this tract right there was the high incidence of 20 to 24 year old population. It also has 63% of it is uh, apartment units. So that's certainly a college track right there. College track. I used to run college track. No, I didn't. Sorry, I'm getting inside. <laughs> Talking too much here. Um, we have a whole, like I said, a whole bunch of stuff. It's all downloadable. It's all navigable. Um, we added city tracking or city mapping. Um, these are city boundaries for um, not only the 28 cities, I'll just show you a city Lincoln, just so we're kind of keep on a thing. Um, you know, so you can download this and, you know, put it in a PNG file or whatever. Um, also here, there's a 22. It's the same sort of, you know, same track database as Lancaster County, but it's just this specific city boundary. We can see that track again. Um, things get really fun when you go down to smaller areas. Emerson, Emerson Village. Oh, that actually looks pretty nice. Uh, so Emerson Village has three census tracts, um, and all the young folk live down in the you know southeast, 12% right down there. Oh, that's under five. You're the young families. Um, you, then you can kind of see well where the elderly populations are, um, kind of up here. So that makes sense. So uh, yeah, on my development notes is to get some get some better layers underneath there, so you can actually track where these things are. 
Um, Cause I, like I said, I wanna make this as useful as possible and that would be useful. So um, every city and village in the state is available for mapping um, at, with, all of the, with all of the possible things to map. Uh, we also have to, to go along with the CHAS mapping. Let's see if, let's see if this works. We also have all the CHAS mapping data sets here. So CHAS housing problems, we have regular census housing problems and then CHAS housing problems. Okay, now let's see if this works. Ah, so we also put in little Easter eggs throughout the, um, you know, throughout the dashboard just for fun. Not only for fun because data, you know, there's just so much data out there and there's a lot of ways to look at it. This is called a migration wheel. Uh, this maps IRS uh, tax return information. So if you file your taxes in a county and move to a different county or a different state, the IRS knows that you did that because your last address was over here and now you're filing over here. So it's actually the most accurate migration data available. Uh, we've added it here. It goes back to 2011 and 2012. Uh, by the time we speak again in March, uh, we'll have the most recent stuff. Um, you know, talking about Lancaster, we can, if you hover, it'll kind of show you what's going on. But if you click, it'll just highlight what's going on with Lancaster County. And if you really want to see, you just click on the other one and it kind of just shows you what's going on. Uh, the width of the band is how many people are moving in. So you can see here, Douglas has a wider area than Lancaster. So there's a net, in, net movement from Lancaster to Douglas. Uh, but Lancaster is also getting, um, you know, also losing folks to Sarpy and uh, Gage County as well. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're interested in trying to figure out where people are coming from to your specific town or county, uh, this is a great place to, to look. Um, you can kind of see what's going on. Big increase, you know, big migration flows between Douglas and Sarpy. Um, and a little bit of Florida. All right, no Florida's there. Oh yeah, there's Florida. A little bit of Florida. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's a fun little thing right there. Um, like I said, the, all the reports are downloadable. The data is also downloadable. Uh, you just copy it over. If you don't want to download it by the, the individual chart, you can download a chunk of data. I'm thinking about just putting all the data in a zip file. I might just do that. Um, all the reports are here and the about tabs, um, you know, about NIFA. Um, the website, email, help, this is me again. So you can mail to me or you can report bugs at the front of the page. Um, and then links, we have a bunch of different links to different uh, county websites and things like that. Um, this is called a circle pack diagram. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah, okay. I think, uh, yeah, so now I think I'm ready for questions. I, sorry if I kind of run, ran, ran through the end of there. I didn't think I could talk that long, but I guess I could. Well, I think you just covered just about everything that you possibly could on the site, Tim. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, I don't believe we have any outstanding questions at the moment. Let me see Wait. here. Uh, I think Steve Peregrine wants to say hello. Oh, hey, Steve, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, uh, he made a joke that it's good to see the copy still works for you. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. It's a little early. I'm on the West Coast. It's a little earlier, and I bet you could tell when it kicked in. So, <laughs> all right, right. And you know, how's your city doing? I know you've been through a lot. So yeah, um, we we finally have clean air. Uh, last week, last week was rough. Like it was a uh, it was a tough it was a very tough week. There's nowhere to go. You couldn't breathe in your house. You couldn't breathe outside your house. You were just had headaches. You couldn't sleep. So um, apparently the smoke's over there now. So <laughs> so I hope you guys stay safe. All right. Yeah, well, well, thank you. I not really seen any other questions. I think you okay. did a great job answering. Thank yes, you, well, Tim. I really thank hope this, absolutely. And uh, like I said, if there's these these type of things are really valuable for me to get feedback of what people want to see. Uh, in this, so if anyone does have a request or something, please email Royce or John, and they'll get they'll get it with us, and we'll get it in there. We're about to start ramping up development for next year's uh, dashboard, so um, we'd we'd love to accommodate whatever requests wherever possible. Yeah, sounds good. And I know we've talked to Tim about uh, doing maybe tutorials for specific types of kind of lessons to use. So if someone had a specific thing um, that they you know we're looking for data for maybe we could create something like that and uh, just to give a shout out to we have lots of webinars coming up so you know keep uh, watching our, our website and uh, scroll uh, 
to the banner for our conference connections and networking with NIFA. And uh, thanks, Royce, for moderating today. And thank you, Tim, for being here today. Always this will pleasure. be recorded and be on YouTube. Awesome, great. Yeah, very good. Well, someone just said tutorials would be, would be great. So we'll start working on those. Yeah, that, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. So cool. Oh uh, yeah, this is a big, this is a, it's a complex tool and uh, I, we wanna make it as easy and as usable as possible, so. Great. Well, thank you very so good. much and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for having me and I can't wait to see everyone hopefully in March. So. <laughs> All right, take care All right. everybody, thanks. Thank you guys.